This is Jeremy's version of, of juggling because I, I thought I was going to do this whole thing in order. I was going like power, racks, you know, IP. And then I went to IP addresses. What about VLANs? Okay, yes, technically VLANs are at layer two of the OSI model. So I kind of just jumped right past that, that layer and went to the IP addressing and how to do aggregates, prefixes, IP et cetera, et cetera. What about VLANs? Well, the good news is VLANs are incredibly simple in the Netbox world, but extraordinarily useful, right? When you're looking at your prefixes in Netbox, let me expand this out for just a second. You can see that, that you know, they have a field right here that's got the VLAN assignment. Now there's, there's two ways that you can do VLANs. <laughs> I would say the quick and easy way and the way I'd recommend. The quick and easy way is where you go in and just start adding your VLANs. This will be, you know, let's just say VLAN 1000 for our, uh, let's just say web databases, right? And this will be at the site, my first site, right? Um, we'll put uh, web DB. You know how you have the, the name on the switch, the actual name configured? That's what you put in that, in that name spot right there, right? Click create and add another. We'll say VLAN 1001. This will be our, our user DB, right? And this will be where we we're put on our user uh, databases. Again, it's so handy when you just create and add another because Netbox keeps a lot of the common fields that you would keep the same when you're just mass adding these things. So I'll click on create. Now I've got my two VLANs. Now, when you go and assign your prefixes, it's very logical. You know, just I, it's it's worth showing. I'll, I'll go in here and say, okay, well, this one is I edit this prefix is actually part of the VLAN uh, user DB, right? And so now I can see that in my documentation, I can see that reflected when I'm looking at the prefixes that I'm assigned to the right VLAN. Where it gets even better is when you start going. Let me let me just show you that also another quick way. You can click on edit selected, and it changes this over here to where you can, no, oh, hang on, edit one prefix. Ah, it doesn't have the VLANs at that one, I, that's funny. So I'll click on, click on it directly, edit it this way, and maybe I just missed that when I was uh, looking too fast. So usually you can edit it real quick from that, uh, that site, but now I've got this assigned to the two. So, so assigning VLANs, again, for your documentation, extraordinarily useful, extraordinarily easy to do right there, but if you don't add VLAN groups, Netbox will not have it maintain the separation of VLANs. What, what I mean by that is VLAN groups are simply there to keep your VLANs unique. The rule is when you create a VLAN group and you add your VLANs to it, only one instance of each VLAN can be in that VLAN group. So right now, if I were to go in, like watch this, I can, I can go in and I'm like, oh, you know, I'm just daydreaming, doing my thing, and, and I'll just add in VLAN 1000. Uh, happens to be, you know, my daydream uh, DB, right? Or, or, you know, daydream. And we, we can even put it at the same site, my first site. Click on create, and it'll let you do that all day. I've got this now. Oh, man, I'm creating conflicts. I'm daydreaming. I, I'm not, I don't even know what I'm doing here. But I've got two VLAN 1000s. Well, if you use VLAN groups, you won't have that problem. This is where we can say, hey, this is, this is my, you know, my site, my, my, uh, data center VLANs. Now, again, name it, name it logically because, for instance, when you're at a data center, if you're using VRF and all the kinds of different things, you can have multiple VLANs. So you might name it a VRF number. You might, I mean, you get the idea, right? This is just to keep it unique. You can put a nice little description in there. But this is where we can then go in and add our VLANs, right? And this is where we can add VLANs to that VLAN role or we can go the other direction. That's if you want to create them and go to the VLANs we've already created. Let's go and add uh, the WebDB, and this is one that you would probably want to do in, in, uh, in bulk. We could say, hey, that's my data center VLANs. Click update, go back to the data center. Oh, hang on, right back here, uh, my first site. There we go. Um, and you, let me, I'll just add this one right now for the sake of it so we can see both of them are in the data center VLANs group. Now you can see if I go in and I, I mean, you can either try to assign it or you can try to create it. It doesn't matter when you go in and you say, hey, let's edit my daydream one and add that to the data center VLANs. What do you think is going to happen? Burnt. Sorry, VLAN with this group and ID already exists. That's the whole purpose of VLAN groups is just to keep the set of VLANs unique. Set them up per site, set them up for VRF, set them up how, whatever separate layer two domain that you have. That's what the VLAN groups align with. It's that simple.